the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The reading from the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that it is discipline that will set us free. And so as we prepare to listen to God's word and to celebrate sacred mysteries, may we once again ask to know God's loving mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you ask us to forgive. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise our God with one voice. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise, we praise you, you, we bless you, we, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, from them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosok, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offerings to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and to the good news. Go out to Peace. 
peoples go out to all the world and tell the good news <laughs> for steadfast is his kindness towards us and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet, later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through the towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. And he will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from east and west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Freedom is one of our most 
cherished avenues to happiness. We want freedom to be what we want to be, to go where we want to go, to say what we want to say, and to do what we want to do. Anything that threatens our freedom puts us immediately on the defensive. From childhood on, we have little stomach for restrictions of any kind. And this poses a problem. As affluence increases and as technology and human inventiveness provide us with more and more conveniences, we tend to be spoiled. For many of us, there is one more freedom in big demand. And it's freedom from effort. Effort and its companion discipline are falling out of use in our culture's vocabulary. Our preoccupation with freedom leads us to believe that everything we have a taste for should be ours by right, and that everything we want should come to us easily. We don't like to hear about hardship, and we're impatient with talk about patience. For example, children and young people subject us to, to relentless doses of contemporary advertising have a difficult time postponing gratification for anything. It's hard to get students to concentrate on their studies. Some laborers consistently go on strike for more money for less work. Young couples don't want to have to struggle starting out in their marriage. They immediately want what it took their parents years to achieve. We want what we want, and we want it now. But while we want a better life for ourselves, we're increasingly reluctant to strive for it. Our second reading from the letter to the Hebrews exhorts us not to make light of discipline, and for good reason. It is perfectly legitimate to aspire to freedom, but we can enjoy freedom only if we accept limits. The irony is that everyone wants something for nothing, for nothing in a society where everything good costs. Life can be a bowl full of cherries, but for the most part only for those willing to pick them. To be physically fit, for instance, we have to work at it. To live comfortably in a good house will require generous hours of maintenance. To have a satisfying marriage or friendship will demand commitment, tact, flexibility, and endurance. Freedom, therefore, is important, but it goes hand in hand with discipline. Self-respect is knowing that we can control our impulses. We can delay our gratifications and make an effort required to attain what we want out of life. Spiritual growth always requires discipline especially when we're called upon to give up whatever holds us back from our development and to persevere in the struggle to attain our goals. Effort and discipline are both needed for a full and ultimately satisfying life. May we profess our faith together I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us strengthen our drooping hands and our weak knees and turn to the Lord our God for help for all the needs of the world. That God's mercy be upon us during this jubilee year of mercy as we strive to live our call to enter the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church throughout the world, as we seek to bring more people into the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety and welcome for refugees and all those who seek wel welcome into our free land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry, homeless, unemployed, underemployed, and otherwise at the perfectities of our society that they know the kindness of God through us. Let us pray to the, the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parish vocations committees of our diocese, that they will grow in appreciation of the task entrusted to them, and that the seeds of awareness they plant will grow to maturity through prayer and care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you welcome into your kingdom all those who hear and keep the words of your Son. Graciously grant these prayers that we make in his name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and God's people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. made partakers of Christ through these sacraments. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.